are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On MLB your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. On today's episode, which is being dropped on the 16th day of October 2021, where we take a look at Games 1 and 2 of the American League Championship Series. Game 1 could not have gone better for the Houston Astros. Game 2 is still going on as I record this, and we're going to get an update, albeit probably one that will be a little loud and complicated, from friend of the podcast, Melissa Monto who is a huge Red Sox fan and a Texan. Go figure. This show is available here on YouTube. And if you have a smart device, be sure to tell it to play podcast Lockdown MLB or check out some of the other great shows on the Lockdown Podcast Network, including Lockdown Astros with H-Town Wheelhouse and Eric. And also check out Lockdown Red Sox with our good friend Lauren. And you can follow us on Twitter, Lockdown MLB Pod. Same handle for Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. As you can see here, if you're on YouTube, you can follow me at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. So, yes, as I'm recording this, the Red Sox and Astros are still in the middle of playing game two of the ALCS. Game one, uh, let's just break it down a little bit and talk about the elephant in the room. And once again, the elephant is not Stomper. Chris Sale should not be starting for the Boston Red Sox. I said it. He should not be starting. He got his he got his butt kicked by Tampa. He was handed a 3-1 lead in against Houston, and he needed a little bit of magic from Adam Ottavino to wiggle out of it. But he didn't pitch. He let up five hits and one walk in two and two-thirds innings after getting bombed out of the first by Tampa in his start there. Look, at Chris Sale's a great pitcher. He had a couple of wonderful seasons. One year, he maybe should have won the Cy Young, which certainly was in the conversation for it. It was 300 strikeout season. Had a bunch of memorable moments in the postseason for the Red Sox. Obviously, the biggest highlight was being on the mound, the pitcher on the mound, clinching the World Series, striking out Manny Machado, who I bet you forgot was a Dodger for an hour and a half. And so the, the Chris Sale acquisition has turned into one that has benefited both teams. Chris Sale benefited the Red Sox by helping them win a World Series title. Yoan Mankata was the main chip who went over the Chicago White Sox, and he's become a very important part of a team that has gone to the playoffs each of the last two years and does not look like their window of opportunity has closed. So it's one of those situations where it's a deal that's worked out well for both clubs. I don't mind having Chris Sale on the roster if you're rooting for the Red Sox. Maybe use him at one point in out of the bullpen. Maybe do something where you need an inning or two out of them. But uh, at this point, you know, Tanner Houck and Nick Pavetta are better options for right now. I didn't say they're better pitchers. And I don't think that Tanner Houck or Nick Pavetta have, will have better careers than Chris Sale or maybe be more talented. But as of this nanosecond, you have to make that adjustment. Pavetta obviously pitched beautifully out of the bullpen. In his two starts, he gave the Red Sox a ton of innings. And uh, in went, what, four innings in the extra inning marathon against Tampa Bay. I would be much more inclined to see him start and how who did let up the home run to Altuve in game one out of the bullpen. But you don't know how we would pitch over a period of time. And that was also a strange situation to put him in. I would feel more confident if you're a Red Sox fan to see the Red Sox use Eovaldi, um, uh, Eddie Rodriguez, Nick Pavetta, Tanner Houck as your starters. And, you know, whatever combinations left out of the bullpen. And let the starters pitch. Maybe get five or six innings. Squeeze five or six innings out of them. So you're not always turning to the bullpen every two minutes. Look at, obviously, the Red Sox looked like they were a team that were not even going to make the playoffs at one point. And now here they are in a situation where they're in the American League Championship Series. Who would have thought they would have lasted longer than the Giants? I digress. The Red Sox can't keep starting Chris Sale, especially in this series 
where the Astros have a real disadvantage. That Jenga piece of taking Lance McCullers Jr. out of their rotation for the playoffs, for the, for the ALCS, is not to be underestimated. McCullers Jr. is a fine pitcher, and he, you know, he pitched well against Chicago in the league championship series. To take him out for a team where you're going to be leaning on the Christian Javier's of the world it is uh, it's kind of scary for Houston. Now, what is scary for anyone facing Houston is the rent- relentlessness, easy for you to say, of their lineup. And for the game that took place for the game one victory for Houston, and they wound up getting, you know, um, the Astros brought out a parade of relievers after Fran Valdez just did not have it. Um, uh, Christian Javier, pitched great for them out of the bullpen. Um, but the, everyone else, all the other relievers, and, and Maton, who, the, who they got from Cleveland, did well. Graveman uh, let up a key hit. Um, Presley, did, you know, let up the home run to Kiki Hernandez. Um, their bullpen didn't look great, save for um, Javier, who I thought pitched wonderfully. But when you look at their lineup, I mean, Altuve, when he hit that game tying home run, it was just so, you know, predictable. He was going to do something at that point. Um, let's not sleep on McCormick, who made a really great catch in game two, that he gets his three hits. Um, Guriel gets his hit, but it was Correa. And you know what? It's funny. I don't mind hot dogs. I'm not just the food you eat at the ballpark, but I don't mind someone being a hot dog. I really don't. And the whole. Correa pointing to his watch thing and say, this is my time. I find that to be funny. I find that to be really funny. Yeah, it didn't bother me in the slightest. That's, 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 I thought it was clever. You know, I, you know, in the mentality of, of in, in past times, someone would have hit him. Well, past times are stupid. Okay. Correa hit a go ahead home run in a razor thin playoff game between two pretty evenly matched teams. When you put these two teams together, they both have questionable rotations, especially after the uh, exclusion of McCullers. They both have, when they're clicking, lineups that could score almost at will. And they both have, the Astros have the better bullpen. So if it becomes a bullpen game, Houston's going to have the advantage. That's what happened yesterday. And you saw Sawamura didn't have it. Hauk didn't have it. And the, the Astros bullpen wasn't great either, but it was just a, it was just a little bit better. And they won the game. They won the game. Um, I kind of you know if you were pulling for the Red Sox, I would have liked to have seen them try to squeeze a few more innings out of some of their pitchers. I maybe get a second inning out of Hauk. But here we go. Sawamura was terrible, absolutely terrible. And the Red Sox got a key double play from Martin Perez, uh, but, you know, I just don't, you know, you just can't be confident with that bullpen. And that's probably going to undo the Red Sox. Undo, it undid one game where they had a three-to-one lead. It may undo another one. I'll tell you something that can't be undone is the fact that Carlos Cray, and I've talked about this on the podcast. I've talked about this when I had uh, Eric in H-Town from Locked on Astros on the show. Astros have to sign Carlos Correa. It just, it's imperative, especially when you're seeing so many superstars are re-upping with their ball club. And that's why you're not going to see Joey Votto hit free agency in his prime. You're not going to see Mike Trout hit free agency in his prime. You're not going to see Fernando Tatis Jr. hit free agency in his prime. All these key players you're not going to see hit free agency in the prime because the teams are locking them up. That's exactly what the Houston Astros have to do. It can't be because of money that this becomes an issue. The Houston Astros are swimming in money. It's a gigantic market. The owners are richer than you can possibly imagine. And this is a rare player. And I'll say it, and if anyone thinks that this is controversial, Astros Twitter already hates me. I would let Altuve walk before Correa. I would let anyone else walk on that team except Correa because Correa gets it. Correa is the leader of this team. Correa is, uh, he's obviously, a wonderful player. Uh, he had a really, he had a solid year this year. You know, he hit, he hit for power. 
you know, he hit for, you know, he had an all around terrific year. Um, he's still in his prime. You know, we forget this because he's been in the league for seven seasons and has played in, you know, two World Series. He's going to try and make it three this year. He seems like he's been around for a while. He was only 20 years old when he won the Rookie of the Year in 2015. Okay. And sure, he strikes out too much. He doesn't steal any bases, but no one steals bases anymore. But, and this goes beyond the fact that he is, you know, has, uh, he's a 902 career OPS in the postseason. He understands his role with the Houston Astros. He understands his role as the leader of the Houston Astros. He understands his role as the face of the Houston Astros. And in light of all of the, the controversies that happened, regarding the championship year, the questions about some of the other years, the suspicions that people always have. He is the one who has put the team and put himself front and forward and has be, been the leader of this club. And he was so in the postseason last year when they got to game seven of the LCS. He's been so again this year. And he understands that the, you know, there's part of them seems to understand that the Astros are villains. They are. And he gets that, and he plays off of that. And that won't play anywhere else. And Correa has to understand that to a degree, too. The Astros have to pay him. They have to pay him fair market value because of what he means to this team. If you Jenga him out of this team, then forget it. But Carlos is not going to be welcomed any other place. Houston fans like to live in a bubble, but that dome is retractable. And Correa is going to be looked upon as a villain wherever he goes that's not the Houston Astros. Sure, the fan base will eventually warm up to him. But it's going to be one of those things that the Astros won't be able to understand what they're missing if Correa leaves. And Correa won't be able to understand where he's not, he won't be as loved and as respected anywhere else except in Houston. These two have to get it to work. But that doesn't mean the Astros can you know, low ball. He's worth top dollar. 27-year-old superstar shortstop with postseason experience. Come on. You don't think there's a franchise or eight who could use someone like that? Now, I thought it would be ironic if he went to the Dodgers because I thought that that would be kind of the penance that the Red Sox had to give the Dodgers their superstar, Mookie Betts, and the Astros had to give their superstar, and Carlos Correa, but you know, it looks like that if Seeger walks, Trey Turner's going to slide right in there. Fine. There's going to be some other star. There's going to be some other team that needs a star shortstop that will be able to pay through the nose to get it. And the fact of the matter is, the Astros can't let him go. He means too much. He means too much to the team. He means too much for them as a championship caliber club. And if they let him go, then the amount of repairs they're going to have to do on this team almost won't be able to be judged or conceived of. The repairs, like if you do repairs to your car, you better do it right, like going to rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless and seemingly intimidating questions while the person on the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers and access to rockauto.com at home in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years whose prices are reliably low for every customer. So go explore their easy-to-use website to find the solution for your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck Right, locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you. Reliable prices, amazing selection, whatever order you want to say that copy in, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, we have friend of the podcast at game two of the ALCS. Melissa Monto, are you there? Are we using modern technology to get you at the game? Where are you? I see a door. <laughs> Sorry. There you are. <laughs> All right, tell us where you are and tell us your thoughts so far. I can hear you just fine. Okay, you can hear me. I can, I can barely hear you. All right. All right, tell me your thoughts. We got the uh, we got the Red Sox up 9-3 to three at this point. 
Yeah, it's going good. Um, it's crazy here. Everybody's excited. I found some Red Sox fans beside me. My son's sitting by a Red Sox fan that had to be kicked out. Uh, <laughs> everybody's just excited. Emotions are high. All right. And are there a lot of Red Sox fans? Are there a lot of Sox fans there? There are. There, there are more than I thought there was going to be. Um, so, yeah. It's just like, Oh, what are we missing? Now, 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 the, the Sox hit two grand slams. Yes. Sox, Sox are doing, now, where, now where, are you sitting in the Crawford boxes? You're sitting in the Crawford boxes? Where are you sitting right now? Yeah, sitting in the Crawford boxes. And what was your, what was your view on the two grand slams there? Oh, it was, it was awesome. And then, um, Kike hit a home run right above me to the right. So that was exciting. F and A, and you're and you're here with your amazing husband David yes. and who, yep. and who else? Is it? David. Hey David, there's the amazing <laughs> husband David. You got the tickets. He got the tickets, so he's the oh, real yeah. hero. Yeah, yeah, he's the hero. So yeah. just so everyone knows, Melissa has been a friend of the podcast for years. Has been a diehard Red Sox fan for years and years in Texas. I still don't understand why, and that's <laughs> fine by me. That's fine by me. You and I have been, you and I have known each other for years, and I'm so thrilled you're at this game. And I just wanted you to just, I just wanted you to call in and uh, just give a report. Give a report from, uh, from, from the ballpark. Yeah. It's, it's been awesome. It's loud. It's like, yeah. I can barely hear you. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. I, I, I couldn't resist. I knew you were at the game, and I couldn't resist getting an update. There's David. Give a thumbs up, David. Yeah. All right. I'm everyone. trying to live with you. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me get you back to your seats. I wanted. I, I know that I knew someone at the game. I couldn't resist having you jump on the show. And yeah, thank uh, I'm you so, so much for having us. I'm so glad you're there at a game where the Red Sox are doing something great. Yeah. All right. Go Sox. All right. Go. Get, get back to your seats. Get back to your seats. Okay. Yes, that's a little bit of modern day technology. You know, when Melissa and I were talking about maybe having her jump on the show, it was, I had a little more, uh, uh, you know, we we were like, yeah, we're going to call in and everything. And then she's like, when I was texting her, she's like, yeah, it's really loud here. It's really, really loud here. But hey, I'm glad she's at the game and everything like that. Now, as I'm recording this, the the game is not over. Uh, Boston's up nine to three and they hit the two grand slams in the first couple of innings, which is kind of sort of unbelievable when you stop and think about that you had you were up eight nothing before the Astros had their second at bat. And you know, look at I'm not gonna be the first one to make this observation, but uh the Astros starting pitcher Garcia was awful. And then he mysteriously gets an injury. I didn't see where the injury was. And who knows? It might be a giant legitimate injury. I don't know what's happening. But it seems strange that it happened at the moment that it did. And, of course, the really annoying thing is Odorizzi came in. And there's the whole thing about you get to have no time limit on your warm-up pitches. And I, I totally understand the concept of that when we're talking about an injury. That he, you know, You're not expected to be coming in there. And you're going to be able to have your, uh, you know, your time. You're not going to rush you because it's, you know, you're, it's not because someone got shelled. It's because the, you know, we'll, we'll take their, we'll take their word for it. You know, the Astros have earned our trust uh, that the, that there was, that Garcia was truly injured. And so Odorizzi, um, you know, took a sweet time. He, and it was like 20 some odd minutes before he even got on the mound. And I, it was, I look at, I'm not trying to say that they should have rushed him, but I remember that there was an instance in Palo Alto where I was, where I lived during my high school years, where there was some restaurant that had an all you can eat buffet. And someone came in and just kept eating and eating and eating and eating and would not leave and after a while the restaurant said hey look at you've been here for just hours can can you you know get the check and go said no it's at all you can eat and he kept eating and eating eventually they threw him out and the guy the the guy got 
try to make it a, a legal issue and everything. And I, I think that when they say there's no time limit, there's there's kind of an understanding that like, well, let's get this going. Let's, let's get this going here. I mean, get get yourself warm. Just like all you can eat means three, you know, going for thirds. <laughs> there's nothing at an all you can eat buffet that you should have more than three helpings of. Even kale. You know, but like at some point you're like, uh, you know what we mean when we say all you can eat. And you know what we mean when we say, uh, there's no, we're not going to put a time limit on it. Like, just get yourself warmed up. Get yourself loose. And, of course, the thing that made it so bizarre um, was that uh, he almost immediately let up a grand slam, which made you think, hey, um, maybe you didn't need so many uh, pitches to get warmed up. But as it stands right now, the Boston Bats are back. As as I'm recording this, the game is about halfway through. Now, the Astros did indeed score three runs in the fourth inning against Diavaldi. Uh, friend of the podcast, uh, Gabrielle, former host of Locked on Red Sox, said that after it was 8 nothing and the ridiculous Odorizzi uh warming up situation she said why not just pull odor easy now we got an eight run lead have have uh not have evaldi pull evaldi now and uh i'm so i'm a little reticent of that because quite frankly uh there's no lead that's safe in houston's ballpark and i don't trust the red sox relievers to hold an eight run lead and now here we are you know, the, right now, as of this recording, Ivaldi is still pitching for the Red Sox. Personally, I would love to see Ivaldi. If you're a Red Sox fan, you should want to see Ivaldi throw a complete game and give the entire bullpen and the entire pitching staff a two-day rest period because they seem to be going to the well every two minutes. But that being said, it was uh, it's a pretty good start for the Red Sox. But this is Houston. And it's now a six-run lead for Boston. And when you think about fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, a couple runs here, a couple runs there, next thing you know, the tying runs at the plate. And Correa's checking his watch. Uh, So we're going to see how this game ends, and we'll get this up as soon as we can. Hey, I want to just, again, thank you all for making us here at Lockdown MLB your first listen every day because we are free available on all platforms and look at it's no surefire bet that the red sox will win this game because of the bats that houston has and what a hitter's ballpark it is in houston and if you're going to make any bets go to bet online because it's your number one spot for all the pro college football action this season with a new updated site and interface and even more odds props and contests bet online continues to be the number one source for everything football Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use the promo code LOCKDOWN to receive your bonus. From football, baseball, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Las Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so the game is over, and the Red Sox won. It was 9-5. to five. It was actually not as close as that score would indicate. The Astros picked up a couple of garbage time home runs off of Darwin's and Hernandez, who clearly was in there to just get a little bit of work and to just get uh, – to basically, you know, have his moment of, hey, how would you like to pitch in the postseason and have that be uh, – something that you do. But the fact of the matter is the Red Sox did what they needed to do. They jumped on the Astros early, hit the two grand slams, Devers and J.D. Martinez. Uh, Melissa and David are screaming there at the ballpark. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. It, I'm glad I got Melissa on. It just was so loud and so chaotic where she was trying to do it from the Crawford boxes. But that's great. She's been posting stuff all day. And follow her at Attic Socks on Twitter where you can see she posts a lot of funny things, a lot of funny uh, stuff about the Red Sox and her love of the Red Sox where she's there in the middle of Texas. Now, will the series return to Houston? Probably, because I don't think there's a way that one team is going to win three in a row here, mainly because both of their pitching staffs are a little bit of a coin toss right now. 
I mean, right now, it looks like Jose Urquidy is going to pitch for Houston. Now, Urquidy is not, uh, you know, Urquidy is a talented pitcher, but I, I don't know if he is someone who's going to be a real difference maker in this series. I mean, Urquidy started 20 games this year through 107 innings. Um, you know, I mean, he should be fine, but he's, again, not someone who they're expecting to go many, many innings. You, you know, Christian Javier has been one of their more impressive pitchers out of the bullpen. Part of me wants to say, give him a start, but at this point, whether you're starting or relieving, it doesn't really matter. It just seems to be what your role is for any particular time. Uh, both teams' bats are going to be super hot when they go back to Boston on Monday. Uh, I... You know, you're trying to get an audience for this, and they're starting the game at 8 o'clock East Coast time. Some reason you can't start at 7. You know, they, they there used to even be the excuse of not wanting to interrupt the local news because the local news was the big money maker for each of the local affiliates. You're not interfering with local news. You're not interfering with local news, okay? It's on what, FS1? There's no local news on FS1. Start the game at seven. Hell, start at six. Start at six. You know, people getting home from work, every the game's already at the third or fourth inning. Guess what? That's how we do things in California. You know, because for me, the game's starting at five. It's a great time. It's a great time to start a playoff game. We have it here all the time. As a West Coast baseball is fantastic. We get morning playoff games. You know, the games never go that deep into the night here unless it's an 18-inning game between the Red Sox and Dodgers in game three of the 2018 World Series. You know, you start the game at 6.30 East Coast time. Seriously, what, what what's the downside of that? More viewers? A bigger audience? Well, we want to make sure what? What are you making sure? You want to make sure people don't see the end of the game? That's what you should be aiming for. How do we get more people to see the ending of a game? When you think about classic games, do you say, hey, remember that game? How did it start? Now, of course, today might be the exception because J.D. Martinez hit a grand slam before the Astros even came to bat, and the Red Sox were up 8 nothing before the Astros had a second at bat. But either way, uh, Nathan Rivaldi pitched another solid game, and he didn't pitch that many pitches so he may be ready for game five, certainly ready for game six. If the Red Sox win all of their home games for the rest of the postseason, the worst case scenario would be they would lose game seven of the World Series. We're going to see what happens. Two evenly matched teams that can hit, whose pitching staffs are in flux, and whose bullpen is uh, difficult to predict. Let's be honest, difficult to predict. But both. Offenses are just firing on all cylinders right now. In the blowout loss, the Astros scored five runs. In their one loss they had to, I mean, what was the one loss they had to the uh, Chicago White Sox? Even in the one game that they lost to Chicago was, uh, what was the final score? 12 to 6. So Houston's lost two games this postseason. One game they scored six runs, the other game scored five runs. Even when they lose, they score a pile of runs. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a slugfest. Uh, you're not going to see any complete games. I think uh, it was Ivaldi pitched five and a thirds, and that is going to be essentially your iron horse. That is going to be your innings eater, five and a thirds. I mean, I would, in fact, I think there's almost no chance that someone's going to throw more than five and a third innings as a starter in this entire series. So we'll see what happens. It was a uh, interesting first two games. Very easily could be up 2-0 for the Red Sox, but the Red Sox did what they needed to do, which was go to Houston, win one game, take home field advantage away. After the loss last night, I really didn't think the Red Sox were going to do anything. I thought they looked like the inferior team, but then I thought the same thing about the Tampa Bay series too, and I thought they were going to lose to the Yankees, so what do you know? But here's one thing I do know. This is going to be an entertaining series. If you like offense, if you like some big-name players swinging the bats well, whether you like Altuve, whether you like the antics by Correa, whether you like 
everything that Kike Hernandez or J.D. Martinez does, well, you should just watch this series anyway. J.D., think about that. There was a J.D. Martinez hit an ALCS Grand Slam. J.D. Drew hit an ALCS Grand Slam for the Red Sox. Johnny Damon, who's a, that's J.D. Johnny Damon hit an ALCS Grand Slam for the Red Sox in 2004. Jackie Bradley Jr. also hit an ALCS Grand Slam, but that's a JB, not JD. So I guess it didn't quite fit the pattern. Either way, lots of runs scored. This is going to be a fun series. I'm just going to drop this as soon as I can. I'm, if I'm guessing, Melissa and David haven't even made it to their car yet. So go to the free and easy to use Odyssey app. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe. Thanks for making us the first listen as we're available on all your free platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Lockdown MLB Pod. Same handle for Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Saying hello to friends at the game and reviewing the first two games of the 2021 ALCS, which oddly does not involve the Tampa Bay Rays. This has been Locked On MLB for Saturday, the 16th day of October 2021. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.